In this video, we take a look at the use of pipelining in a processor to improve efficiency. OK, so to understand this concept, let's start by looking at an analogy of writing some invites. There are three friends that want to organise a party and they want to write and send out invites to 100 people. So we've got a couple of options here. So this first option is very inefficient. One of the people writes all 100 invites. They then place 100 invites in envelopes and attach the stamp. And then they address 100 envelopes. Now, obviously, with a little bit of help from the friends, they can make this process much quicker and more efficient. So one person starts by writing the first invite. While he then starts writing the second invite, one of his friends places the first invite into an envelope and attaches the stamp. They then pass that on to another friend who addresses the envelope. The second person can now take the second invite and attach a stamp, while the original person can start writing the third invite. Obviously, this is a much more efficient method. And a similar mechanism is effectively what computers use when they're doing pipelining. So let's have a look at how this pipelining concept can be used to speed up the process of fetching, decoding and executing instructions and also discuss one of the main limitations. So our processor starts by fetching the first instruction. So now we fetch instruction two while instruction one moves on and starts to be decoded. The processor now fetches instruction three while decoding instruction two and executing instruction one. And the process continues. The processor fetches instruction four while now decoding instruction three and executing instruction two. So we can see how pipelining is a technique which can be used by a processor to improve performance. But how does it actually achieve this? Well, without pipelining, the various different steps within the fetch, decode, execute cycle would have to take place one after the other. In this example, we can see that while the next instruction is being fetched, the ALU, which is responsible for carrying out mathematical equations, is sat idle. Now, this isn't a very efficient use of the ALU or indeed other registers in the processor which may not be involved in the fetch stage. By using pipelining, the next instruction can be fetched while at the same time, the processor is performing arithmetic or logic operations in the ALU for a previous instruction. In this way, we can make efficient use of the various registers and onboard CPU cache, and it allows different parts of instructions across multiple stages to be held in different registers at the same time. Processor pipelining is often divided into an instruction pipeline and an arithmetic pipeline. The instruction pipeline consists of the various stages an instruction must move through the processor and the arithmetic pipeline consists of the parts of an arithmetic operation that can be broken down and overlapped as they carried out. Pipelining is very common in today's processors and it allows multiple instructions to be executed simultaneously. So let's just work through this simple piece of pseudocode on the left. Well, line one has been fetched and we can see that here. Using pipelining, line one now moves on to be decoded while the processor moves on and also is line two. Now we fetch instruction three while decoding instruction two and executing instruction one. So, so far, this is all working perfectly fine. We now fetch instruction four while decoding instruction three and executing instruction two. But now potentially we're gonna have a problem. 
we're fetching instruction 5, decoding instruction 4, and we're executing instruction 3. But if you notice from our pseudocode, instruction 3 may cause us to branch elsewhere. And indeed, that's exactly what's happened. Having finally executed instruction 3, we now discover we actually need to jump and fetch instruction 6. And this, of course, means instruction 4 and 5, for which are already being fetched and decoded by the other two cores, now need to be flushed and removed. And this is known as flushing the pipe. So while pipelining does indeed improve the efficiency of fetching, decoding and executing processes, a program which contains lots of branching instructions may not necessarily benefit much from the effects of pipelining. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How can the speed of a processor be increased further?